Com. to initiate the confrontation. Hey, Greg. Hi. Sir, that's the issue. Oh, How's it going? shit. Okay, I remember this. Yeah, I, I haven't seen this video, but I do remember this case because this was the woman who, I'm pretty sure she she killed um, the wife of someone who she liked like back in high school. And then they're like, so what do you know about this couple? And she's like, oh, I just, I just knew them back in the day. But... There's more to the story. There's no one around. Uh, well, have a seat. I don't want to talk about this in the squadron because I, I don't know who people are listening. That's true. That's and if we go to my side. And the kicker, this bitch was a cop. Everybody's yeah. always wondering what everybody oh, else yeah, is doing. No okay. The first thing the detectives do is set up a compatible tone with a suspect. She has just stepped foot inside an interrogation room, and the detectives negate the negative implications of such an environment through a friendly disposition. Consultative meetings, such as seeking advice over an art theft, can take place anywhere, and the last place detectives would choose to spend more time in would be an interrogation room. The reason they give the suspect for meeting in such an unusual location is to not spread rumors or innuendo, yet the real reason is that all firearms have to to be checked in before entering the area, and they needed the suspect to give up her gun without alerting suspicion. But, uh, like we're talking about being business stuff, we've been assigned a case that we've been looking at. Okay. okay. It's a new case, and... Dude, she is so, like, unaware of herself, because knowing that she did something in the past, like, that shit's gonna come to bite you in the ass at some point. So... She doesn't understand that they're luring her into interrogation room under the guise of, hey, we need you to help us with one of our cases. Little does she know, they're fucking, they're at her heels. We're doing the case. Like, There's some notes bitch. to see that as far as your name being mentioned. Oh, you, okay. Do you know John Rudin? Try and imagine for one moment that you savagely murdered a love rival in a jealous rage. Over two decades had passed since the act, then all of a sudden you're brought to an interrogation room and sat directly opposite two senior investigators who bring up the name of the man you committed first degree homicide for. Bro, I would be shitting bricks if I was her. Like, you think that for 20 years, that you've you've gotten away with this shit and they mention the name of the guy whose wife you killed. I I would have crazy eyes too, bro. My eyes would be popping out of my face if I was her. John Rutten. John Rutten? Rutten. The investigators already knew how to say John Rutten's name correctly. The mispronunciation was a simple strategy to see how the suspect would react. Setting aside the element of the murder, John Rutten was the second longest relationship in Stephanie's life, and a psychiatrist later stated that this pause was four times as long as it should have been. She was already being deceptive by acting as if she hadn't thought about that name for so long, giving reason for her prolonged reflection, when in reality, the name John Rutten was engraved in her memory, and even when slightly mispronounced, it would have most likely taken milliseconds for her to realize exactly who the detectives were referring to. Mm -hmm. right. Oh yeah, I went to school with him. You did? Yeah. How long did you know him? <laughs> I went to school with him. That's that's as vague as, as we can be for someone who you were in a very long relationship with who you eventually killed somebody Gosh, over. Well, I went to school in, um, let's see, went to UCLA in 1978 I started and, um, you know, met him at school at the dorms. Mm -hmm. um. She says she met him in the dorms, yet left out the fact that they had dated for four years and went on numerous holidays together. Even though she wasn't asked directly, a truthful subject would most often volunteer this information. Dude, he is so right here. Cause if you went to high school with somebody and you dated them and the police are asking you about them, 
don't you think like that's one of the first things that you would mention like yeah i was in a relationship with this person for like four years but that's like she doesn't want to mention that that's already sus it's super sus she met him in the dorms yet left out the fact that they had dated for four years and went on numerous holidays together even though she wasn't asked directly a truthful subject would most often volunteer this information without having to be pressed for it were you guys friends close friends yeah we're very close friends I yeah mean, i mean what's this all about well it's regarding it's a case we're working on and it involves what's john this all about? And in there some of the statements we, we reviewed uh you know there's notes and stuff that he, that he knew you and stuff oh yeah i mean we good friends um lived in the dorms for i lived in the dorms for two years um you guys lived in the same dorm yeah we're we're solely becoming boomers too jenny you need to remember that <laughs> Okay. Yeah, Dykstra. Okay. Were you guys just friends or anything else or? Yeah, we were we were good friends. Yeah. Was there ever any relationship or anything that developed between you guys? Yeah, I mean, we dated. Uh, uh huh. You know, um, I mean, is it, what's this? Like? Bro, the amount of times that she like slammed her hand on the table while she's saying, "Uh, yeah, we 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 dated a little bit," like, bitch. Could you be more obvious? It is, uh, uh -huh. you know, um, I mean, is it, what's this all about? Well, it's relating to uh, his wife. It's unfortunate that Stephanie's face wasn't captured at this moment because she would have no doubt been immediately struck by the psychological reaction known as fight or flight. Her brain- Bro, yes, I wish, I wish that we could have seen her face when they mentioned, oh, it's, it's about the wife of that person because man the the guilt just fucking flashed over her face i'm sure reminds me of fargo dude i i still haven't seen that show i've seen the movie but i never saw the show should at this moment because she would have no doubt been immediately struck by the psychological reaction known as fight or flight her brain would have just triggered the influx of a specific cocktail of hormones in order to prepare her to either stay and deal with a threat or try and run away to safety stephanie chooses to fight okay okay did you know her not really i mean i knew that he got married years ago uh-huh did you ever meet her god i don't know um do you know who she was or anything well, I... Bro, she literally comes off as someone who thinks that she could outsmart other cops just because she's a cop. She's like, I know these tricks. I know what a guilty person looks like. Let me do whatever I can to look the opposite of that. But she, she comes off looking even more crazy. God, I don't know. Um... Do you know who she was or anything? Well, I... Let me think. God, it's been a long time ago. Um, mm -hmm. um, I, I may have met her. Um, geez. The words, gosh, God, gee, are exclamatory gee. remarks used to express surprise or strong emotion. You will see them used... You know, I... I want to play L.A. Noir. I've never played it. I've only ever seen people, um like reacting like reacting to other people playing it i've seen that but yeah i i just love detective shit so i i would probably really enjoy that game used continuously throughout this interrogation which is the suspect trying to insinuate a vague memory due to a lack of contemplation on the subject matter she's trying to emit the impression that she would have had no reason to give any further thought to john or anything related to john since they stopped seeing each other over two decades ago you know yeah. Uh, well, let me see. Let me ask you. You said you, you dated John. How long did you guys date? I mean, what well, are you guys? Is this something? As we know, girl, you could have just answered the question. Why? Why are you deflecting? You look worse. Let me, see. Let me ask you. You said you, you dated John. How long did you guys date? I mean, what well, are you guys? Is this something? As we know, Stephanie is a cop 
and has been for 25 years. She will be wise to the fact that acting oblivious to the unusual development of the situation will be a glaring red flag in the eyes of the investigators. What? It's been shown time and again on this channel. Guilty suspects will often try and act naive to a blatant confrontation as a means to avoiding it altogether, whereas truthful subjects will address the confrontation and either refute it or, if it's subtle, want immediate clarification and transparency as to what was being yes. insinuated. I mean, you said that I was going to interview somebody about art and how well, you guys are... Here's like, do you know how guilty you look right now, bitch? She's like, oh, but you brought me over here about some art. Why are we changing the subject? Bitch, this is the main subject. <laughs> Dude, yeah, that paused frame is horrifying. Look at her fucking face. I mean... Stephanie, here's the... Like, she's so incredulous. Like, why are you asking me this? I, don't, I can't fathom why. I was going to interview somebody about art and how well, you guys are... Here's, here's, <laughs> I mean... Stephanie, here's the situation. It's basically, we, you know, we knew that this... Uh, <laughs> the heavy breathing. Dude, the heavy breathing got me. She looks like she is so fired up. Basically, we, you know, we knew that this... Uh, when we saw this in, the, in, in this chrono, that maybe, you know, there was some relationship there. That's what the chrono seemed to indicate. The detective now subtly avoids the question altogether, but instead offers a deceptively reassuring response to the suspect. He makes a very sharp switch from the investigative subject matter to the previous topic of workplace rumors. He brings her focus back to the false perception of them being on her side. Stephanie had just asked what was going on, and now he essentially replies with, we are your friends, we're doing you a favor. And we didn't want to come up to you at your desk and ask those kinds of questions or do anything. You know how up there people can see what- Girl, she looks so high strung. Like, bitch, if you want to look not guilty this ain't this ain't the way the face when you tell her the coupon is expired ma'am <laughs> no lie what's going on if you go into an interview room or people are in there getting oh, supplies and, so we, we wanted to afford you some privacy some confidence stop slamming your hand on the table ma'am she okay. already to talk about this because we thought it might be you know something you know you're married to someone else obviously and so forth and that you may not want to, you know, talk about these things in that setting where someone, you know, we don't want the rumor mill or gossip or any of that kind of stuff yeah, to start. I mean, that's start. fine. I mean... So we're, we're, we did this just as, as a means to try and speak to you in okay, just a confidential I mean, just, place where you, you know, where where your business isn't out there for other people in, in well, you know, I mean, your division yeah, to know about. I mean, Whether it be shock or the total reluctance to accept the situation at hand, Stephanie warily accepts the reassuring response without further inquiry into her initial challenge. She instead falls back into her agenda of having a foggy memory with regard to the incriminating contents. Yo, got it. Yeah, she's literally ab abusing the table, like, ma'am. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if it's expensive because it's in a fucking interrogation room, but shit, you need to chill. Foggy memory with regard to the incriminating contents. Yo, yeah, well, God, that's been a million years ago. I mean, you know, um, what year is it now? 2009? I mean, I graduated in 82. 82, yeah. Um, you know, we dated. Um, I dated other guys. I'm sure he dated other girls. Um, well, let me ask you. A <laughs> girl, from what I heard from y'all's case, because I think I saw either Mike, it was probably Mike from that chapter. He did a video on her. And she didn't really date many people while she was with him but he did so um feels like you're lying ma'am well let me ask you <laughs> roughly how long would you <clears throat> would you say you guys dated jeez oh, um i couldn't even say i mean Notice how she now goes on to over-explain things that don't require an explanation and weren't even inquired about. It's a clear-cut indication of hyper-arousal and a derivative of TMT, also known as terror management theory. The suspect will go off on unrelated tangents as means for gaining momentary relief. Going into detail about trivial things affords her a brief escape from the terrifying reality eventuating before her. This is a very common occurrence in interrogations where the suspect is facing serious charges and psychiatrists believe it to be a subconscious coping mechanism. I started school there in 78. Mm -hmm. I started UCLA in 1978. Mm -hmm. I graduated in... You know, 
that makes a shit ton of sense the whole terror management thing because cops tend to during interrogations they'll drop a massive bomb on the person that they're interrogating and then they'll wait for this person to dig their own grave just by continuing to talk it's a really good strategy and i did not know that that was the name of that like that process that you go through fuck she is screwed i started ucla in 1978 Mm -hmm. i graduated in 82 um i don't even remember what year he graduated if it was a year or two before me okay um i think he was a little bit older than i was like that's crazy dude you see all those answers that she's giving when this was the main question like what's the what's the reason what was the reason man what was the reason reason. what was the reason i mean you know i can't remember if he was born let's see i was born in 60 1960 i don't know if he was born in 58 or 59 i mean i you know um, i mean i knew his parents i knew his sister his brother went to northridge man Um, that's irrelevant um you know sister spent the night at my house before obviously i spent the night at his house before he probably spent the night at my house before um you know i i yeah i don't well correct me if i'm wrong because from what you're telling me you you guys dated while you were in college together right yeah and probably after college um i'm I, i can't geez um trying to think when I met my husband. I met my husband in, when did I meet Scott? Um, let's see, he's teaching dare. She doesn't even remember. That's how unimportant her husband is. Because I met Scott when I was teaching dare up in Oregon, but we had long stopped, you know, dating before that. So you um, haven't talked to him for a long time? Oh, I, I think I have. Oh, now it's TurboTax? Why, why can't y'all give like good commercials? Commercials about, you know, things that have to do with the stream. No, we got terrible text. I haven't talked to him in a long time. Um, I couldn't even tell you when the last time I talked to him. Um, I met Scott, I'm thinking in 92, maybe, um, April of 92. It was Scott being your husband. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I was teaching Dare. Let's see, what year is this? We'll be married. I got married in 1996. I think I met Scott in 92. Prior to that, I couldn't tell you how long I had talked, you know, talked to John prior to that. But mm-hmm. since um, you since you met your husband, Scott, you hadn't talked to him? I mean, he may have called me uh, once or twice uh-huh. before we got married. Right. Um, you know, geez, I, I lived, in, I moved to see me in 1994 because I- Oh my God, this is the most long-winded fucking answer of my life like you're still going bitch no geez i i lived in, i moved to see me in 1994 because i lost my house in the earthquake oh really? um uh quite honestly i probably keep in contact with like this is the worst the worst interrogation i've probably ever seen <laughs> like wow actually no i take that back the one that um, JCS just uploaded was pretty bad, so I take that back. This is just... I don't understand the mindset behind just filling your answer with fluff. The cops are gonna look at you like you're fucking crazy. You're a cop. You should know this. A few people from the dorms, we, we, all, we all lived on the 10th floor. Um, and um, there's about three or four people I keep in contact with. There's probably like six or eight of us that were all really close. Mm-hmm. And who are those um, people? Oh, geez. Um, Diana Basta. Bro, she mentions being really close to people, and then she does that reaction where she's like, I don't remember them. And then you start saying their names. Did you make those up? Are those real people? Or... (laughs) Dude, yeah, imaginary friends. Um, Has to be. People I still keep... I I haven't been in contact with her in a long time. Um, I mean, what's... what's, I mean, what's this all about? I mean... Well, let me ask you. 
The suspect challenges the detectives for the second time, and once again the question is avoided, but this time in a more confrontational manner, as the topic is maintained with no reassurance afforded. The detectives are ramping up the pressure in a very subtle, yet highly effective manner. What ended the relationship between you and John? You know, I don't... It was kind of a weird relationship. I mean, we, we, we dated... Um, I can't say that he was my boyfriend. I don't know that he would con consider me his girlfriend. Okay. Um, we just, we dated, we did things. I played sports in college. He played basketball. His brother played basketball. Um, it, it, we just, you know, it just didn't work out. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. It was like, I went out with other guys, um, saw other guys. I went on lots of vacations, um, you know. No, you didn't. you guys split were you guys still friends or kind of uh, you know problems? i mean is it friendly not friendly no i don't think it was not friendly i mean we were friendly um uh, i know that we went to hawaii um at one point yeah i mean i you know and you were saying that um the, it's 2009 now had you ever met his wife i may have do you know do you remember her name or anything or um, um, you're avoiding answering the question because you know damn well that you killed her. Like, we know. You, you can stop acting. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> or what she did for a living, or where she worked, or anything uh -huh. about her? The suspect was just asked three consecutive questions relating to the victim. She was supposedly in a reflective state during all three of the questions, yet her facial expression completely changed for the third one. This is because she was pretending to be in a state of reflection for the first two questions, as she already knew the answers. Whereas for the third question, she actually was in a state of reflection and was genuinely searching her memory for the correct response. Had you ever met his wife? I may have. Do you know, do you remember her name or anything or? Um, um. The third question is about to be posed and her focus is about to switch from pretending to be thinking to actually thinking. Or what she did for a living or where she worked or anything um, about her? Well, I think she, I th I'm going to say that I think she was a nurse. Um, I mean, I can't even remember how he, he said he met her. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, I mean, it's been so long ago. Well, let me ask you, did you go to their wedding, you know? No, I didn't go to their wedding. Um, no, I don't, did not go to their wedding. Um, I couldn't even tell you what year he got married. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it's, it's been a million years ago. You know, again, I, I mean, what, you know. Bro, it's, it's the way she keeps going back to, but why are you talking to me? Why are y'all asking me all these questions? You look sus every time you bring that up. Just so you know, ma'am. Just so you know. Oh, I don't understand why you're talking about some guy I dated a million years ago. Well, do you know what happened to his wife? Yeah, I know she got killed. You wouldn't need to be an expert in body language to recognize the unmitigated terror emanating from the suspect's face at this moment. She had just verbalized the victim's tragic demise for the first time in most likely over two decades. What did, um, you, what did you hear about that? I, I saw a poster at work. Um, I'm sure I spoke to him about it. Um, I think I spoke to another friend of his about it. Um, and how did, how did you first learn about that? Jeez. <laughs> Someone could have called me. I could have heard it at work. Um, I think at one point there may have been a flyer or something. I know a good friend. Dude, this woman wears all of her emotions on her face and she swears she's slick. His, um, Were you on the job back then when that happened? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I'm sure I was on the job. That's why I would have heard about it with the flyer. Um, he had a good friend, Mike, Mike Boldrick, Mike, um, um, but, you but, know. But being that you're kind of used to see uh, John you know, was it everything okay between you guys? I mean, there was never anything uncomfortable or anything between you and her? Um.
Eight separate witnesses testified that Stephanie had confronted Sherry at the hospital she worked at, while the two of them were reportedly in an intimate relationship with John. The confrontation was said to have been highly aggressive, and Stephanie had to be escorted off the premises by security. Reports stated that Stephanie was by far the more combative, and even made threats against Sherry's life. You know, I don't know. I mean, it's God, it's been so many years. I mean, it's been so many years, but you don't remember threatening her in public where people could see. Oh, geez. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> you took the words right out of my mouth, bro. Uncomfortable. I mean, I can't even I can't even remember if we had a conversation. I mean, we may have. I may have. I may have seen her at his apartment. You know, it, uh, geez, how many years ago is? This is so bad. <laughs> You're a terrible actress, girl. You're terrible. Dad, I don't even know what year she, you know, got killed. Where was his apartment? Notice her passive disposition as she gives the following truthful response. On Roscoe. Okay. Yeah, Roscoe and um, um. East or west of DeSoto, uh, either east or west of DeSoto. Do you know where he moved after, did, did he move after he got married or do you know or? Now notice how her disposition switches from passive to frantic as she once again pretends to have a vague memory. Oh, <sighs> I'm sure he did. Did you know where um, he was living or? Somewhere in the valley. Did you ever visit him and his wife? No. No, never no. went out to, you know, get together, no. dinners, anything I know, of that nature. No, no. Like I said, his sister used to come over. His sister had, had, had come to my place. I knew his, I knew his brother because his brother played basketball at Northridge. Um, in fact, I was just coming across some pictures that I had just scanned, uh, scanned from, um, I take a lot of photos, uh -huh. um, like 10,000. <laughs> and I just did a service where I scanned everything. Oh my God, uh, why? Why do you keep going on tangents? It's just, it's very interesting to see all of the, like the tools, like the tools in the toolbox that guilty people all have and they all carry around, they all do the same shit. The diversion, the, hey, let, let me just keep talking and see if I can get you to focus on a different question to ask me like these people do this for a living you're stupid if you think that you could cover something up in front of a cop yes the sloppy ass cover-ups oh jesus I, I can't after his wife died did did you talk to him again or anything yeah i mean i did talk to him mm -hmm. i talked to him probably his parents um, probably some other friends, um, you know, I'm sure I talked to him. Yeah. Um, but you, you don't, you're not sure where he moved to after he got married? No idea. I mean, never I, went over to, to visit him or I don't think, I mean, I don't or, think so. I hate that face that she makes. Like, it's so, like, the, mm, come on, man, come on. I mean, never I, went over to, to visit him or I don't think I mean I don't or, think so I mean um, I don't know I don't I mean I don't think I did um, I mean I know he lived on Roscoe for a long long time I mean she's over here smacking tables all aggressive and shit it wouldn't shock me if she runs the fucking prison where she's at um weird ass bitch and you're right I mean if you guys are claiming that I'm a suspect then you know, I, I got a problem with, you know, with that. Okay. Okay? So, you know, if you're if you're doing this as an interrogation, you're saying, hey, I'm a suspect. Well, I, now I got a problem with, you know, now you're accusing me of this? Is that what you're, is that what you're saying? We're trying to figure out what happened, Stephanie. I got a problem with this. Well, I'm, I was, you know, I'm just saying, you know, do I need to get a lawyer if you're accusing me of I this? I mean, you know. You don't have to, I mean, you know. I'm See, you keep bringing up Fargo. I'm going to have to watch Fargo. I, I'm going to have to know. I'm just, you're here of your own free will. I mean, no, you, you well, I know, but I mean... I you mean, know you're not, you're not under arrest. You can walk out You can leave you whenever you like. Well, but, you know, I, I, I'm trying to give you some background of, you know, how I knew him. And now you're telling me... You can leave whenever you like. 
and she continues to talk. Like, you're way dumber than you look. That some, somebody's saying that we had this big old fight and I don't even know what you're talking about, um, you know, and I don't want to, you know, get in trouble for something that I didn't even do or you're saying I did something. Okay, yeah, we understand. I mean, how would you guys like it if the tables were turned on you? Dude, seriously, lawyer up. If, if you don't think that you're guilty and you can work your way out of this bitch get a lawyer but no instead you just stay here and you're like but i could provide more info okay keep incriminating yourself then got you. you i understand no um no that's what we're telling you i mean you're free to go whenever yeah. you want if, if this makes you uncomfortable and you want to well you wanna, now you're starting to make me uncomfortable the thing is i mean detectives did what they could at that time on the crime scene okay and the burglary thing you're talking about that is an angle that they looked at angle but now we're looking at everything else on the case Nobody was ever arrested on the case. I, I don't know that or not. Okay. What? Bitch, you're just saying shit to say it. <laughs> now, what we'd like to do is, obviously you know about all the DNA stuff and things of the nature that, you know, gets done on cases nowadays. You know, if we asked you for a, a DNA swab, would you be willing to give us one? Maybe. <laughs> Does she really just say maybe? D Does she just say maybe to that? the nature that, you know, gets done on cases nowadays. You know, if we asked you for a, a DNA swab, would you be willing to give us one? Maybe. Because <laughs> now, 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 yeah, because now, now I'm thinking I probably need to talk to a lawyer. Okay. Probably. I mean, well, I, because I know how this stuff works, okay? Don't get me wrong. You're right. I have been doing this a long time. Yeah. And, and I wish I had been recording this because, because now it sounds like, you know, there's, you know, you're selling these people, say I'm a fighting with her, and now it sounds like you're trying to, you know, I've been doing this a long time. Yeah, we know. Okay, and it, and now it almost sounds like you're trying to pin something on me. No, now I, I... Is she fucking serious? She... <laughs> God. Got that sense. Well, what it gets to on these, on these cases, and you know it as well as I do, our job is to identify and eliminate suspects. I can't believe this. So, if we ask you to a point, I can't give us a DNA this. sample buccal swab so we can identify or eliminate you would you be willing to do that maybe because i know this i i i, I well, bitch, if you didn't do it dna would fucking clear your ass but that's the problem she's over here like um i don't know it feels like you're trying to pin something on me so i don't want to give you the shit so you can actually pin it <laughs> your logic is horrible that's where we're at too. I mean, because right now, from looking at the evidence, it's you know it's possible we may have some DNA at the location. That's great. And we're going to do what we can to try to put this thing together. And your name's in the book. These people are pointing at you for whatever reason. I don't know why. And that's just crazy. I mean, that's just that's absolutely crazy. And it would be irresponsible on our part not to look at it. I know. You guys have to do your job. And, and I guess I'm going to have to contact somebody. So That's fair. I mean, because I, I know how this stuff works. Sure. I mean, I, I, I You clearly don't know if, like, she doesn't know how this stuff works. She says that she does. She says she's worked this job for however many years. If you knew how this shit worked, you would know that there's a fire under your ass. <laughs> I, I, I just can't believe it. That's, I, I mean, we, we understand. I can't believe it. And that, I mean, if we were in your position, I mean, we would feel the same way. I just can't even believe it. I mean, it's just, I, I mean, I'm shocked. I'm really shocked that somebody would be blamed, saying that I did this. I mean, we had a fight, and so I went and killed her. I mean, come on. Well, That's... <laughs> Bro, Sorry. the funniest thing is that no one mentioned that until she did. <laughs> well, thanks for giving me the courtesy. I wish I Thanks for your time. Yeah, thank you. All right, Stephanie, take care. All right. Oh, girl.
absolutely crazy. Let's see, Stephanie. This is insane. Okay. They brought her back in handcuffs. Oh. Okay, Stephanie, you know you have the right to remain silent. Do you understand? Yeah. <laughs> Anything you say may be used against you in court. Do you understand? Yes, yeah. read this bitch her rights. You have the right to the presence of an attorney before and during any questioning. Do you understand? Yes. If you cannot afford an attorney, one will be appointed for you free of charge before any questioning if you want. Do you understand? Yes. Do you want to talk to us right now? No. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. This then. is crazy. Okay. This is absolutely crazy. I'm like, I'm like in shock. I'm totally in shock. You're in shock, but you're still talking? That's not how shock presents itself. This afternoon, we are back on the record in People versus Lazarus. Shortly before noon, the uh, jury announced they have a verdict. We will take the verdict this time. People of the state of California versus Stephanie Eileen Lazarus. Case number BA-357423. We, the jury, in the above entitled action, find the defendant, Stephanie Eileen Lazarus, guilty of the crime of murder of Sherry Rasmussen in violation of Penal Code Section 187A, a felony, as charged in count one of the information. We further find the murder was of the first degree. Oh my God, we get John. his impact statement. I have never seen this. I'm John Rutten. Thank you for the opportunity to speak during this hearing. Um, there are really no words that can describe the loss of Sherry and the whole of, the, of this experience. So it makes no sense to talk very long. It suffices to say that the Rasmussen family, my family, and Stephanie's family have been thrust into a bizarre world of disbelief and indescribable sadness. Sherry Rasmussen had a profound impact on so many people. And I was proud that she agreed to be my wife. Bro, I feel so bad for him. Like, he may have had a relationship with this woman. He may have been a little douchey to let them overlap, but what the fuck you don't just go and kill this man's wife because it didn't turn out the way that you wanted it was impossible not to notice sherry when she entered her room to me her physical presence was startling i can clearly remember the first moment i laid eyes on her sherry rasmussen was a physical presence and my heart still races when i look at pictures of her but sherry was extraordinary more for who she was than the way she looked she was a hard worker a consummate professional, a leader, a diplomat, forgiving, tough, and a kid at heart. Cherry's loss, the way she died, and the trial 25 years after her death has had a profound impact on many, many others. The effects are broad and span a generation, creating pain for those whose lives should have never been touched by this tragic event. Again, words are feeble tools for describing these impacts, but there are so many moments and so very many tears and the fact that Sherry's death occurred because she met and married me brings me to my knees. Stephanie Lazarus was sentenced to 27 years to life for the murder of Sherry Rasmussen. She is currently being held inside the maximum security unit of the Central California Women's Facility. My God. Any other cars that stand out in your mind? Hmm. What the fuck was that? <laughs> Fuck this. You know, yeah, that, that's how I felt when, when she looked at the camera. She's terrifying. Oh shit, that was a that was a really good JCS. I do remember that case, but I I didn't. I didn't see the verdict and I never saw his impact statement. So fucking sad, dude. Literally what he said was true that if she hadn't met him and married him, maybe she'd still be alive, but that's not his fault.
You didn't think that this crazy bitch was gonna go and kill his wife? <sighs> so sad.